Welcome back to our King James study. We are on number 44 of this lesson. And we got about 25 more pages left. Now we're building into, as we're coming to a close, we're actually looking at the history of the King James Bible itself. We're going to look at the people for and against. Now, let me tell you, I'm not only King James, I'm King James only, only King James. I will go so far as even the step that to tell you that these modern Bibles, NIV and all, and RSV and PDQ and all that other garbage, they are satanic. You say, well, Stanley, how can you say that? And anybody that uses those satanic Bibles, where can you stand to say such a statement? You got 43 sermons, 43 lessons that we've done, number 44 right now. You're telling me we got one God, one Savior, one baptism, one church, one nation, Israel. And we got 350,000 Bibles. I don't believe it. And I will go so far as to say that any person that is deceived by a modern Bible, now, listen, you're common Christian. They pick up a Bible, they don't know what a Bible is. I'm talking about the church leaders. I'm talking about the pastors. I'm talking about the Sunday school teachers. I'm talking about the, the, the scholars. I'm talking about the instructors who will not teach the people and will use satanic Bibles. And I'm not talking about uh, the Antoine LaVey's satanic Bible. I'm talking about the modern Bibles of Westcott and Hort of Alexandria. If it's not King James, it's not the Bible. And Stiley will go far as to say, if it's not the King James Bible, you have a satanic Bible. You are reading the satanic Bible. And if you're a preacher and if you're a, a, a teacher or a scholar, you are teaching satanic. Anything that removes and adds to the Word of God. Listen, the very first sin. What is the very first sin? No, it was not eating the fruit. That's not the first sin. The very first sin is when Eve corrected the word of God. Go back to Genesis chapter 3 and read it. The very first sin of mankind is the modern Bibles. You add and you subtract to the word of God. I'll stand to that remark. I'll stand to that st statement of the modern Bibles being satanic. And when I get to heaven, I will not have to apologize to Jesus Christ. You will with your modern Bible. I've got convictions. And I'll stand on them. So today we pick up in 1558. We got Queen Elizabeth I, number one, came to the throne. And in this period of time, did I tell you this is the 44th lesson? In this period of time, you got the Puritans. And the Puritans are the ones that came over on the Mayflower. They're the men with the, with the black hats. They're pure, pure, clean. Puritans didn't celebrate that star and Christmas. Puritans didn't allow paganism. They were strict. They would be Baptist Quakers. Quakers? I mean, if the salvation is not upon Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ alone, you're lost and going to hell. Plain and simple. It's only Jesus. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And you say, well, you know... There's no perfect church. That's absolutely correct. There is no perfect church. But should not the church strive to reach perfection? And you're not going to reach perfection. You're not going to get a revival with satanic Bibles of the modern of Westcott and Hort. Go back. 43 lessons, number 44. Go back and listen to them all. Go back and listen to them with prayer. Everything we talked about. 
So the Puritans, they will come to play with, with King James in the Bible. Then you had the Church of England. This is the Anglicans. Now, the Puritans were up north in Boston, in Massachusetts. They turned, they became the Congregational Church. They became persecutors of Christians. You know, you know the name Baptist, but do you know the name Separatist? Separatists up north in New England were Bible believers. Saved by the, by, the, by the blood of Jesus Christ. And they were persecuted by the congregational church. The church state system. And then you had the Anglicans which were down south of America. Same church state. The Anglicans are the Church of England. The Church of England is a state religion. And then you had the Catholic Church, another state religion. You have two state religions and you have biblical followers. And all three are in a battle. The Puritans are battling for right. The, the, the Church of England is battling to retain England. And the Pope and his church is, is, is we want world denomination. So, and you got the Mary, Queen of Scots, Bloody Mary, and, and you ought to know her for church history because she persecuted and killed and executed Christians left and right. That's where she got the name Bloody Mary. There are men and women in heaven today that will wear a monitor's crown because of the work of Bloody Mary. And I bet you your average Baptist congregation attending Christian Bible doesn't even know the story of Bloody Mary. That's a shame. And it's funny because we have we have, they have a drink called the Bloody Mary. We'll look at that in a moment. But Bloody Mary is associated with a number of historical figures. Queen Mary I of England. You will find her name in the Fox's Book of Martyrs. Not as a martyr, but attempting to reestablish the Catholic Church in England. And in reestablishing or trying to reestablish to bring the Catholic Church into England, she murdered, killed, executed Christians and non Christians. Gee, Mr. Pope, going around peace all around the world, Mr. Pope, your church has killed many millions of Christians. To keep the Bible out of the laps of Christians. So Mr. Pope, shut up! You don't know nothing about peace. Because Fox's Book of Martyrs is mostly about your church. I come out from the Catholic Church. I was a Polish Roman Catholic on April 21st, 1987. I came to Jesus Christ. I didn't eat Jesus. I didn't drink Jesus. I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. And I try to witness the Catholics. And Catholics are the most angriest people to deal with. I, on the street ministry, somebody would come in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I say, you're a Catholic, aren't you? You're angry. This is Bloody Mary. So remember, Christian, when you order your Bloody Mary, you are ordering a drink in the name of a woman that killed your ancestors, your church history. Shame, 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 shame on you for having alcohol. Wine is a marker, strong drink is raging. Whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise, says the Bible. But who looks at the Bible? So she tries to reestablish the Catholic Church in England 
she tries to take over the Anglican or the Church of England. So you have a battle between the Church of England and the Pope, the Roman Church. And then you got the Puritans in there, they're trying to do right. A French bartender, Fernand Pedroc, claimed to have invented the Bloody Mary in 1921. Well before later claims. And so this Bloody Mary drink, it, so many people claim, according to his granddaughter. He was working at a New York bar in Paris at the time. Bar. Which later became Harry's New York Bar, a frequent Paris hangout for Ernest Hemingway and other American immigrants. It ought not to be a place for Christians, any bar, any package store, any drinking. That didn't cost you nothing. New York's 21 Club has two claims associated with it. One is that it was that it was invented in the 1930s by bartender Henry Zerupikitz. There's so much history about the Bloody Mary drink. Who was charged with mixing Bloody Marys. Other attributes was invented to comed comedian George Jessel, who frequented the 21 Club. So nobody really knows where this Bloody Mary drink came from. But it's, it's profound that it is named for a woman who killed Christians. Who killed non-Christians. In the name of the Christian Catholic Church. So every time I hear the Pope, you know, he's talking to the Koreans, he's talking to the Russians about peace, I say, you big hypocrite, you don't even know what peace is. Mail that idiot Book of Foxes, Book of Moderate. While they cover up priests having sodomite relationships with altar boys. And a way to handle that, we'll just move them to another parish. That's how they do it. So you see again, we got the Roman Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic Church is against the King James Bible. The Roman Catholic Church is against the Bible. Friend, if you're against the King James Bible, you are siding with the Roman Catholic Church. If you are totally against the Bible, you're siding with the Catholic Church. So, now we come, like I said, this is very brief. We have a cousin to Queen Elizabeth I, named Mary. She was forced to be adopted on 24 July 1567. Her infant son would be James, who would be made King of Scotland. She fled to England and sought aid by Elizabeth, but was imprisoned. Nineteen years plotted against Elizabeth in England. In 1587, she was executed. Mary... Funny how she would have the name, the virgin. She would have the name as, as you know, the the Virgin Mary. I'm not talking about Mary of the Bible. I'm not talking about the Mary, the, the mother of Jesus. I'm talking about the the Virgin Mary of the Catholic Church. Here's a Mary known for killing, Bloody Mary, and she supports and is in the right hand favor of the Catholic Church. Beware of the Marys of the Catholic Church. Mary, the wife of Joseph, the mother of Jesus, the mother of Joseph, and Salome, and other male children and female children. She wasn't a virgin. She didn't remain a virgin. Mary had other children. Had, would have and has nothing to do with the Catholic Church. Not at all. The Mary of the Catholic Church is satanic, like these Bibles are satanic. You gotta get your facts straight. 
You're either going to have the Bible or you're going to have tradition. You can't have both. And the Catholic Church says, let's have tradition. I mean, the Catholic Church will say, call their priest father. Jesus said, call no man your father. So what are you going to do? I'm going to obey the Bible. Mary, Mary, the queen, the, 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 queen the, the bloody Mary, in her will left England to Philip II of Spain. Spain is another name. Country. Philip could defeat England for the Roman Catholic Church. How come in how come in history in the public school system when you learn about the the, the Spanish Armada, when you learn about Christopher Columbus sailing the ocean blue, why don't you learn the Catholic behind these history? And at the very reason of these wars and battles of Spain, for the Pope is to gain power and treasure and people to the Catholic Church. Why is that not taught in the public school system? Because right across from Washington, D.C., we have a state called Maryland. Oh, you say Maryland. Look at it. It says Maryland. Well, there's only one place that would represent Mary. Mary, Mary, quite contrary, how does your garden grow? Not the Mary who had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. So now we got Spain into play here for the Pope. That's not taught in the public school system. No, you know what's taught in the public school system? Sodomy. Why you don't know what sex I am? You ought to be locked up. If you don't know what sex you are, get yourself a full length mirror. Get yourself in a bedroom. Close the door. Take off your clothes. Look in that mirror. And if it's a penis, it's a boy. If it's a vagina, it's a girl. End of discussion. Anything else, you need to be locked up. That's your public school system. That's a public school system that teaches we come from apes. They don't teach in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. We, we don't have any baby formula anymore. Why? You've been killing the babies. It's been legal to have an abortion in America. And it's been legalized to be a sodomite in America who don't have babies. It's only the judgment of God repent. It's turn or burn. It's the Antichrist coming trying to take over the world. So Spain is in great power to the day. In the time of the 1500s, the, the power of Spain is equal to the power of the United States. The world feared Spain. Today the world laughs at Spain as the world laughs at America. America cannot take care of her own problems, but we're going to go over, we're going to help the Ukraine. What about our homeless vets? We're going to go on Mars and drive a little thing on Mars. But we've got homeless people here in America. We're going to put people on the moon. We're, we're, we're going to be able to have people go back and forth to the moon. you got people who can't afford health insurance. They can't afford to be treated in a hospital. But Lester Roloff said America is an asylum asylum run by the inmates. I think that was said back in the 70s, if not earlier. 
But Spain is this world power like America is a world power. It was feared. Spain is in the realm of the Catholic Church. England is in the realm of the Church of England. In 1588, Philip sent the Spanish Armada. You remember this in school. You know, all those big sailing ships. It was 136 heavily armed gallons, that's a type of ship, and other ships of war to evade England. And we heard about this in school. But what we weren't taught in the public school in America is, here is the Pope, here is the Catholic Church, trying to destroy the kings and queens and the Church of England. You didn't get that far. You got to have a guy here in Daytona Beach, Florida, sitting on a video with facts telling you about the biblical history of our Bible that I have been told by pastors of churches. Oh, you, know, you know too much. You study too much. You don't. Uh. What makes the King James Bible? Why do you believe the King James Bible style? Because of what did I say? Let me turn the page. We are on number 44 of a lesson about the entire history of the King James Bible and the Bibles. And we got 25 more pages left. I think I know what I'm talking about. And the average pastor of a Baptist church doesn't even know nothing. Love and lilies and Oh, yeah, that's what God said. You make God sick, Revelation chapter 3. We're in the Laodicean in church age. We are in the Philadelphia church age right now. So Philip sends his Spanish Armada, 136 heavily armed ships. We're going to go, we're going to blow the Church of England into hell while the Pope will get the rain. There we go. There's... There's the real view of what's going on. So we have another man come up, Sir Francis Drake. I don't know if you remember him. You're not going to remember him too well because you know what? God is on the side of Sir Francis Drake. And we're not going to teach God in the public school system because the Bible's not allowed Prayer's not allowed. And ha, 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 God bless America. Oh, yeah, right. Which God? Muslim God? Hindu God? Catholic God? Protestant God? The Mormon God? Jehovah Witness God? Which God? The people over in India have multiple gods. And then we can throw in the atheist God, no God. Then we can have the Darwinism God. We can have the ape God. The God of the Bible is not in America, my friend. He's gone. I'm in Daytona Beach, Florida. I have been threatened by the Daytona police to be arrested for preaching the gospel on a sidewalk where the Supreme Court said I can preach the gospel. And I had a police officer tell me and my lawyer, if he opens up his mouth again, I'm going to arrest him. 2021. It's all on video. Go to my website and check it out. You can promote sodomy, marching down the street, gay pride, but you can't preach Jesus on the streets of Daytona Beach. You can have a prayer mat and face towards Mecca, but a kid can't bow his head and thank God for the meal that his mom packed for him. Don't tell me about revival in America and all that. That's nonsense. Your panty-waist preachers believe that nonsense. I don't. 
I believe that if there's going to be a revival, it will be of an individual and maybe a family and maybe a church. If they get rid of the gods, they get rid of paganism, they get rid of nonsense and get in a king. Listen, if you ain't King James, you're not getting a revival. If you're celebrating Easter and Christmas, you ain't getting no revival. Asa cleaned up. But Asa sought the doctors rather than God. It wasn't really much of a revival. So Sir Francis Drake versus the Spanish Armada. Philip had 136 heavily armed ships and other ships. Sir Francis Drake had 30 ships and tugboats. Tugboats? <laughs> Have you checked a tugboat? They don't, well, they, they may carry a gun. The, the, the seaman on a tugboat may have a gun, but a tugboat don't have a gun. But he had a tugboat. 136 heavily armed ships and other ships versus 30 ships and tugboats. The Catholic Church versus the, 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 the England. The England in it will give us the King James Bible. Now let me now, uh, here we go. Here comes the odds. Ready? 136 heavily armed gallons of ships of war by Phil in Spain and Catholic Church. England had Sir Francis Drake 30 ships and tugboats and God. Who do you think won? You had 130 heavily armed gallon ships and other men of war ships and the Pope. And you had 30 ships, tugboats, and God. What did Sir Francis Drake do? He didn't do nothing at all. God sent storms and defeated Armada. Go back and check it out. Now in the Bible, there were four fishermen and other disciples. And they were in the ship and there was all kinds of storms. And Jesus was asleep on a pillow. And at one time he come walking on the sea. Oh, oh, Jesus, save us. Jesus, save us. Lord, Jesus, we're going to die. He says, peace, be still. The storms went away. The sea got great calm and they went to the other side. And in the name of the Pope, here's the storm to the Pope. Peace. And the storms got bigger and the storms got bigger. And the, and, the, and the Spanish Armada was defeated by God for a nation that will give us the King James Bible. For a nation that will be said the sun will never set upon the English Empire that sent out missionaries of the church period called the Philadelphia Church Period, which is the church of the open door. And the King James Bible. Not the NIV, not the ESV, not the other garbage. Westcott and Hort. Alexandrian crap Bible. The nation that will give us missionaries. The King James Bible. God sent a storm and defeated the Pope and defeated Spain. Now we know about Spain. We know about 1492. Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue and he came over here and he stole the gold. He stole the silver. He stole the people to make them slaves. And those that would not submit to Mr. King Pope were killed. What was the name of his boat? Maria. Mary. Watch out for the Catholic Mary. Watch out for the Catholic Mary. Sir Francis Drake. 
after this Spanish Armada destroyed by the winds of God, the Catholic Church could not retain their power. Thank you, God. We have the life and the stories of the Fox's Book of Monterey. Sir Francis Drake, he read Fox's Book of Martyrs. You know what King James had a problem with? We're not up to him, but you know one of the problems King James had? King James' family, some of his family was executed by the church. Where there's word of a, where there's Wait, I'm not going to say it right. Where there's word of a king, there's power. I may not have said that correctly. So Sir Francis Drake will now go sailing the seas. Like the Pope. He would go looking for Catholic ships. These Catholic ships would be looking for treasures and gold, and people to enslave for the Catholic Church. Sir Francis Drake would go looking for those ships, and he would sink them. You sunk my Polish ship. Amen. Glory to God. Sink more, Drake. That's not taught in your schools. The Pope and Spain sent people out the great expiration of the siege, you've learned those, to enslave and steal the treasures for the Pope. Those ships would bring the treasures back to the Pope and to the church. But Sir, Dr Sir Francis Drake nearly bankrupted the Pope. Where he could not afford the armies, he could not afford the ships. We're about to come to the Philadelphian age. We're about to come to the open door of the Bible. We're going to shut the door a little bit for the church of Satan. Where Satan's seat is. And we're going to come to be the King James Bible. And worldwide missions. For the blood of Jesus Christ, the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures, was buried and rose again the third day according to the scripture. All hail Jesus, not all hail the Pope. England began to be a great military seafaring leader of the world. You now have the Protestant over the Catholic. Now, Protestant is not Baptist, and Baptists are not Protestants. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Pastor Ruckman. I have to. I, I disagree with you on that. Hey, there are things I've said that people disagree. That's okay. Protestant is a cleaned up Catholic Church. That's all it is. You know, where you read Pilgrim's Progress, Pilgrim's taken to this room, and, and there's, there's someone with a broom, and they're just sweeping, the dust is all over the place. That's the Protestant church. The Christian, born-again, Bible-believing church is where the, the, the person of the, of the inn says, okay, bring a little water. And water doesn't save you, but, and then the place gets clean. The Protestants almost believe as the Catholic Church, they too have sacraments, like the Catholic Church has sacraments. God's Church doesn't have sacraments. There are missionaries that are able to sail around the world for lost souls rather than treasures and slaves. The Catholic Church will put you in slavery 
The church of the open door to Philadelphia church aid is out to find those slaves of sin, the slaves of the devil, and release them by the blood of Jesus. You are in the Philadelphian church aid. We're not yet into the, into the King James Bible, but we're getting there. We're in the period of the Geneva Bible. You know what the Geneva Bible is called? It's called the Bloody Bible. It's called the Moderate Bible. That will bring us to the King James. This is the period right now where we are. People are dying by the Bloody Mary. People are dying by the Pope. Inquisition is a period of the Catholic Church killing people because they want the Bible. They don't want the Pope. That's not taught in your public school system. That's not even taught in your Baptist church. That's not even taught in your seminaries. That was taught in my institute, which is now closed, sorry to say. Charity Bible Baptist Institute, where I am a doctor of theology, taught me church history. I talked to these people who've been to other colleges. They were not taught church history. You got to listen to an idiot on a video that many people hate because of things he said. Well, Paul said, Have I become your enemy because I speak the truth? You hate me to get in line. There's a long line behind me for the truth. So. We got a church that was enslaving the people. Now we got the church freeing the people by the blood of Jesus Christ. And we're on our way. We're on our way to the King James. This is why I believe King James only, only King James. And anybody says, well, Stalin, why, why the King James? Will you teach a lesson about the, you know, the King James? All right, I'll give you this lesson. And like I said, we're at what number did I say? We're at 44. We got 25 pages. We might make 50 lessons. I hope that maybe doing 50, but. I'm not going to guarantee. And then I may, I said last week, I may do one more. Right now I'm working on three different projects. I've been sick. I've been ailing in health. So instead of preaching on the streets, I've been working on some projects right now to see what the Lord will have me to do. Keep me in prayers. Get these videos out. Save them. Share them. Like. Whatever you need to do. Get the word of God out.